Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. Do you get confused between DevOps engineering, SRE platform engineering and machine learning operations or MLOps? Don't worry. You are not the only one. There are a lot of people who get confused between these streams because if you go to the websites trying to understand the definition of DevOps, SRE, platform engineering, or MLOps, kind of the results are similar. That makes people confused if these streams are same. Actually, to be very honest, these streams are not the same. They are totally different. Of course, they have little similarities, but the goals, roles and responsibilities, and the skills required for DevOps, SRE, platform and MLOps are totally different. In this video, we will learn in simple language, not confusing you. I will be explaining the clear differences between all four of them. So please watch this video till the end. It's going to be very informative. Let's start with the first one and the popular one, DevOps. So what is the goal of DevOps? The primary goal of DevOps is to increase the release efficiency of the organization by reducing any manual activities or any operations time that is involved in the software development lifecycle process. So the end goal of DevOps is to deliver applications to the customers in less time. What are some of the tasks of DevOps engineers. Some of the popular tasks of DevOps engineers are continuous integration and continuous delivery. Orchestration of containers through platforms like Kubernetes. Infrastructure as code where DevOps engineers use tools like Terraform to automate the infrastructure creation, deletion, updation, the complete life cycle of infrastructure. Configuration management to manage the configuration of various virtual machines, physical servers that are available with the organization. What are the skills required to become a DevOps engineer? Again, the popular skills are Jenkins, GitHub Actions, Docker, Kubernetes, Ansible, Terraform, cloud platforms like AWS, Azure, or GCP. Let's move to the next one that is Site Reliability Engineering or SRE. There are two primary goals of Site Reliability Engineering. Number one is to define a service level agreement with the customers and within the service level agreement, SRE engineers define service level objectives according to their application. Abhishek. Can you make it simple? For sure. Assume I'm working as a site reliability engineer for AWS for the simple storage service or S3. So as a site reliability engineer, I will create a service level agreement with my customers and within that service level agreement, I will draft the objectives where I will mention the S3 service will be available 99.99% .99 of times. I can draft another service level objective as the data that is stored in the S3 buckets is durable and reliable 99.99% .99 of times. Why do we draft this service level objectives so that the customer who is planning to buy or create an agreement with AWS knows what are the objectives of the S3 bucket and what are they actually signing up for. And in the service level agreement, companies also provide the consequences if they fail to deliver things that are mentioned in the service level objectives. Now, this is one primary goal. Another primary goal of site reliability engineer is very important that is to create service level indicators. So these service level indicators 
which are created by site reliability engineers through the monitoring systems through any automated systems that they build help organization understand if they are meeting the service level objectives are they in the green zone or they in the yellow zone or are they in the red zone where the service level indicators are indicating that the sla might fail with the customer so that's why sre engineering is very very critical using the sre engineering organization can get the alerts about the service level agreement meeting the expectations or not some of the tasks of site reliability engineering is defining the service level agreement objectives creating the indicators using robust monitoring platforms like prometheus datadog elk any of the monitoring systems or any of the automated systems to create indicators for the organization some of the skills that are required to become a site reliability engineering is a strong understanding of monitoring when i say monitoring it is not only about understanding of monitoring your kubernetes cluster it depends on the application that you are working for as a site reliability engineer there are various levels of monitoring so good understanding of monitoring good understanding of kubernetes platform knowledge of programming languages such as python golang let's move to the next one that is platform engineering platform engineering is nothing new it has been there for a very very long time now one of the primary goals of platform engineering is to create tools that can help developers and devops engineers improve their efficiency abhishek again can you explain in simple way for sure the best example is tools like jenkins argo cd these are the tools that are developed by platform engineers so platform engineers sit with the devops engineers understand the requirement and create tools that can help both developers and devops engineers just like how jenkins and argo cd does so platform engineers understand the requirement from devops engineers create the tools with better ui ux and backend another good example is also aws where developers and devops engineers can log into the platform that is created by the platform engineers the aws console request for the resources through the platform without having any understanding of what is happening under the hood as a developer you can simply log into aws request for ec2 instance without having any understanding of virtualization of what is happening under the hood what are some of the skills that are required some of the skills required to become a good platform engineer is thorough knowledge of programming understanding of ui and ux because as a platform engineer you will build tools with good user experience and user interface and strong backend so you need to have knowledge of ui ux and backend along with that understanding of devops will definitely help the next one for today and the final one is ml ops ml ops definition is very simple but unfortunately i have seen a lot of websites and a lot of blogs actually confusing people machine learning operations with machine learning they both are totally different just like development and devops let me make it clear the goal of machine learning operations is to create a set of workflows and practices that aims at streamlining the process of deploying and maintaining ml models exactly similar to devops where devops does the same thing with traditional applications in ml ops you do the same thing for ml models and workloads so you can simply say ml ops is a subset 
of DevOps where the MLOps engineers deal with ML models. That's the only difference. So let's see what are some of the common tasks. Some of the tasks of MLOps engineers is to set up CI CD for ML models, is to use infrastructure as code to set up infrastructure for the ML models development and delivery. Deploy the ML models onto the target platforms like Kubernetes. Configuration management, where managing the configuration of your ML workloads and the ML infrastructure. What are some of the skills that are required to become machine learning operations engineer? So you should have the same skills as DevOps engineers. Additionally, you need to have skills like WASM. You need to have skills that helps the ML workflows using tools like Kubeflow. End of the day, if you are a DevOps engineer and if you are interested in the delivery of ML models, it is perfect for you to switch into MLOps. It's not difficult. It is currently growing. There are a lot of challenges that MLOps engineers are dealing with. For example, how to deploy a ML model onto Kubernetes through the containers. Of course, it is possible today, but it cannot be done seamlessly as you do with your traditional applications. You need to involve WASM, you need to involve uh, containers to deploy ML models onto Kubernetes. And there are other challenges which MLOps engineers are dealing with. So currently it's in the stage of growing. If you are interested in the ML models, then I will highly recommend to take a look at MLOps. It has a very good future. So this is the video for today. And finally, I want to say, don't confuse MLOps with machine learning. Some people are also assuming that MLOps is using machine learning to improve the DevOps practices. Again, that's not true. I hope you found the video informative. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions about the things that I've explained. And thank you so much for watching the video. See you all in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.